You like white spoon sugar? Oh, yes, I do. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much. Steer it up. Hi. Steer a little happiness. Steer a little sweetness. Oh. And add some sugar to my world. Hello, good morning, and welcome to the Fizz Show brought to you by Financial Inside Zambia. My name is Chansa Arumunde, project manager and financial literacy educator and advocate. Today, I have a very, very exciting guest here with me, especially just after what we've come out of a very exciting breakfast meeting where he was announcing the fiscal year 23 half year results. I have none other than Mr. Oswald Mungwezi, the Chief Executive of Zambia Sugar PLC, a member of the Ilovo Sugar Africa as part of the Associated British Foods ABF. Welcome. Thank you for being on the show today, Oswald. How are you? Fine, thanks. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So before we get into it, I'm just going to give you a really brief uh, summary of what we just uh, came out of. We just came out of a breakfast meeting where we were uh, listening to the results. And I must say congratulations on an excellent uh, performance that was uh, amazing. Uh, we saw growth of revenue, growth of profit, uh, growth of dividends as well. So that was exciting. Do you want to just maybe touch a little bit on the results for our audience, please? Yes, so um, uh, thank you. We obviously have posted some very good results again mm -hmm. uh, for the second year running. Mm -hmm. um, as, you, as you indicated, our revenue grew by uh, 5% mm -hmm. um, and our profits uh, also grew. Mm -hmm. uh, sales to the export markets uh, increased by 16%. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are very pleased with, um, with the results that we've achieved. Yeah, um, your shareholders must be very pleased too. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, so we will go right into it. Um, it has been over a year and nine months since you took over uh, Zambia's outfit of the Ilovo Group. Uh, walk us through what the almost two years at the helm has been like for you. Uh, thank you. It's been um, a very interesting journey, uh, which started with um, a very warm welcome to Zambia uh, for me and my family, and we we now feel very much at home uh, in Zambia and in Mazabuka in particular. Okay. Uh, so um, it's been a very interesting journey. Okay. Uh, with respect to the um, to the company, um, I joined the company when uh, it had just posted uh, record financial performance, um, arising from a very good uh, performance in the domestic market. Uh, exports were very lucrative uh, following the depreciation of the kwacha. Uh, and when you join um, a company that's doing very well, <laughs> uh, you, you kind of um, have to have an agenda which is based uh, more on uh, the realization of the full potential of the business. Mm -hmm. And that's what I focus on. Amazing. I mean, it's showing uh, that that's what you're focused on. So congratulations for that. Um, and as Financial Insight, we'd like to congratulate you and your management team for delivering yet another half year performance that looks promising for the company. Um, like you mentioned, total revenue for the six month period um, to 28th of February grew by 5% or to put it in layman terms, 2.35 billion kwacha. What are the key drivers that led to this substantial growth? So as I indicated, um, we, we had an improvement in production okay. and uh, typically we limit the amount of sugar that we sell to the export market because we prioritize meeting domestic market demand. So with the improvement in, in sugar production uh, in our 2022-23 season, uh, we were then able to increase our sales to the export market. Uh, and, and that increase in export markets has been one of the reasons why we, we've performed well uh, in the first half of the year. Uh, we've also continued to do well uh, in the domestic market. 
in terms of uh, just our focus on uh, making sure that our product is available uh, and, and is affordable and running promotions uh, mm -hmm. in the local market. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, domestic sales performance has also been very strong and contributed to the performance. So combined those two, um, the increase in sales uh, to the export markets and our focus on the domestic market have been the major drivers uh, okay. of, of our performance. Okay, that's, uh, that's amazing. And it's good to hear about that because uh, especially with the export market just uh, shows the demand for the product and speaks to its quality. Because yes. if it's substandard, then definitely you're not going to be getting the results that you're getting. So congratulations on that as well. Sure, thank you. Yeah. And over the last two years, there has been a bit of a mixture of fortunes due to fluctuations in the exchange rate for the company when it comes to growing sales in the export market, for instance. How different has it been for the company this time around? And what would you say are the key factors that play on the export market? So, um, the, you are right. Um, the fortunes have been uh, fluctuating. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, we, uh, we depend on, on the exchange rate mm -hmm. uh, in terms of export sales realization. So when the currency depreciates, uh, our export realization improves. Uh, for example, in the 2021 season uh, or financial year, when the quacha depreciated to above 20, so one dollar of exports will mm -hmm. give you 20 quacha. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2022, uh, the fortunes re uh, reversed. Mm -hmm. uh, the quacha appreciated uh, to as high as uh, 16 quarter to the dollar mm -hmm. uh, so you can every dollar that we get you get 16 quarter when mm -hmm. you're getting uh, a 20 quarter before yeah. so that difference is revenue that you lose mm -hmm. uh, as a result of the fluctuation in the uh, mm -hmm. in the exchange rate mm -hmm. so this time around it's been it's been a mixed bag <laughs> um, we started with um, with a depreciation mm -hmm. Uh, which uh, significantly improved our, our realization. Mm -hmm. We've just come out of a round of appreciation mm -hmm. uh, and then we've started another round of, of depreciation, okay. which hopefully on a weighted average basis, mm -hmm. uh, there will be uh, an improvement compared to the previous, uh, to the previous year. Okay. So the dynamics of the export market are about where the quarter is. Okay. Uh, also the, the challenge that we get on the domestic market is mm -hmm. that when the quacha appreciates, we we then find uh, increased competition from uh, illegally imported sugar mm. because the U.S. dollar price mm. uh, increases for mm -hmm. for the countries that mm -hmm. supply sugar into Zambia from mm -hmm. the region, mm -hmm. and it then displaces our our, our domestic sales. Mm. So so that is quite um, that is quite a challenge. Yeah. The other thing in the in the in the export market has to do with the world market price. Uh, right now with the world market price in the range of 24, 25 US cents per pound, uh, the export market is quite uh, it's, it's quite lucrative, okay. even at current exchange rates. Okay, okay, yes. that's um, that's good to hear. I want to um, drill down a little bit on the, um, you mentioned about the illicit uh, market. Um, recently, we interviewed the Zambia Association of Manufacturers, of which your company is a member. And one of the issues that the president, um, Ashu um, Sega, raised was the issue of the illicit trade, right? How badly is the illicit trading of sugar hurting Zambia sugar? Um, and the industry and why is there a need for urgency on the part of the authorities in dealing with it and what are some of the things that you think the authorities can do to at least remove that risk for Zambia sugar and so, other manufacturers? Yeah, thank you for that question. Mm -hmm. The illicit sugar trade is a very significant risk for, uh, for, for Zambia sugar. Mm -hmm. um, what tends to happen is that the sugar that comes uh, into the country illegally, doesn't pay VAT, uh, they don't uh, contribute to, uh, to taxation. So it's not just an impact on, on, on Zambia sugar, it's an impact on the, uh, on the country. The sales that are taken away from us are sales on which if we made a profit, would pay tax on them. Mm. So, so, so that tax is taken away mm. uh, by illicit um, sugar trade. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a significant problem, and I'll give you an order of magnitude. 
uh, when we have uh, significant amounts of illicit sugar coming into the, into the country, uh, our domestic sales drop, particularly in the border towns. Mm. And the problem is that we have porous borders and, um, and, and then we just need the authorities to make sure that they improve their capacity and capability uh, to be able to track uh, what is happening mm -hmm. uh, in our borders, mm -hmm. but also to raid um, the uh, traders mm -hmm. uh, where, who uh, sell this uh, illicit sugar mm -hmm. um, and, and the capacity to be able to monitor uh, what, what exactly is going on with, mm -hmm. uh, with the local traders. Mm -hmm. If you look at our domestic sales uh, in the previous year where the because of the level where the, the kwacha wa was at, mm -hmm. we, we didn't have that much uh, sugar coming in. Our domestic sales were 276,000 mm. uh, tons. This current year where we've had significant issues mm -hmm. with illicit sugar, we are projecting ourselves to be, uh, to be 260,000 tons. That shows you yeah. a significant drop mm -hmm. uh, f of 16,000 yeah. uh, as a result of this. Yeah. So it's also it's very, it's very significant. Yeah. Uh, to put it in terms of numbers, uh, 16,000 uh, tons of sugar will be anything between 250 and 280 million kwacha. Oh wow. Yes. Yeah. No, that's very significant. Yes. Yeah. Definitely hope that um, the government officials and the necessary authorities will definitely um, do more because it's not only hurting Zambia sugar, it's hurting the nation and the economy as well at large because the revenue that the country is generating from taxes that can go into developing the nation is definitely being hampered sure. by this um, illicit trade. So hopefully we will get to see an improvement and the next time that we sit down to talk you will be like oh yeah this is uh, something that we have uh, been able to tackle and we're doing well with so hopefully that will be something that we can um, celebrate about sure <laughs> yeah um, in terms of uh, operating costs for the company um, thus far they've increased by about 11 percent right um, the costs that your management team is deeply concerned about, um, what would you say those costs are? What is driving the, um, the operating costs right now to 11%? 11% is a significant increase in uh, operating costs. So what would you say are the drivers for the, that increase? So the major drivers of, uh, of our cost increases are in the areas of fertilizer costs, mm. uh, also fuel costs, mm and um, and electricity costs. Mm. So um, electricity is a very significant cost for us because as you know, we produce sugarcane mm -hmm. uh, under irrigation. And it's, it's very important that um, we irrigate our crop and do so adequately to produce enough cane to produce the sugar that uh, our markets need. And these cost categories have significantly increased. If you look at fertilizer costs, for example, the Ukraine war mm -hmm. has put a lot of pressure on, on, on fertilizer costs. Um, and we, we have taken a lot of measures, but the, those costs have increased by about 30% wow. uh, on, on, on fertilizer alone. Mm -hmm. um, and the electricity costs um, continue to increase mm -hmm. and, um, and to some degree being benchmarked uh, to the um, uh, to the exchange rate uh, between the quarter and the dollar, mm -hmm. which, which makes the, the cost of electricity uh, quite high for us. Mm -hmm. And fuel is, um, I think we all experience uh, the increase in fuel mm -hmm. uh, costs. We use a lot of fuel for our agricultural operations mm -hmm. and also we, the transport costs are, mm -hmm. you know, uh, played back to us. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so those are the three major, uh, major uh, areas where we have had uh, significant uh, increases in costs. Okay, and uh, so with that said, what would you say are some of the measures that you're taking to mitigate um, this this uh, increasing costs, operating costs? I know you spoke about some of them in the um, presentation earlier this morning in terms of the fertilizer where you're now using your um, group company to make bulk orders to bring the price down a little bit. Do you mind maybe talking to some of the shareholders that may be worried to say operating costs keep going up? What are some of the things that you're doing to mitigate um, that increasing operating costs? 
So in terms of um, our fertilizer costs, we are leveraging the buying power that we have as uh, Ilovo Sugar Africa Group. Mm -hmm. And as a result of bulking uh, our requirements for all the um, six countries in which we operate, mm -hmm. uh, we are able to reduce the, um, the fertilizer costs. So, so that's, one, uh, th that's one element. Mm -hmm. We are also looking at uh, initiatives to apply the fertilizer better. Uh, so when you start applying fertilizer through through um, drip irrigation, for example, mm -hmm. uh, or through your center pivot systems, mm -hmm. uh, you reduce the amount of fertilizer that you um, that you apply. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at uh, at those measures, which is buying better mm -hmm. uh, and and also improving um, how we spend mm -hmm. uh, on on fertilizer, mm -hmm. and then how we utilize how we utilize uh, mm -hmm. our fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Uh, in terms of uh, in, in terms of electricity, uh, we have uh, we are in the process of entering into a, into a power supply agreement with Zesco, mm -hmm. and uh, those negotiations are at an advanced stage. Okay. And hopefully, what that does is it might not necessarily reduce the the costs, but it will uh, definitely. Uh, make sure that we do know exactly where we stand, mm. and and our you know mm -hmm. we we don't have fluctuations exactly. and uncertainty of not knowing yeah. what our electricity costs are going to yeah. be. Uh, so that will be the benefit of having a, a power supply agreement. Mm -hmm. um, I spoke earlier uh, during the results presentation about our own investment in electricity generation, mm -hmm. um, and as I said there, uh, we produce. When we produce electricity ourselves, we produce it at cost, and and, and that uh, could uh, potentially reduce our costs. Okay. So those are some of the things that we are doing, leveraging uh, buying power, mm -hmm. uh, our group buying power for fertilizer, uh, and then entering into a uh, power supply agreement mm -hmm. uh, with Cesco, and then increasing our own power generation. Okay. Yeah, no, that's, um, thank God for innovation, right? Yes, sure. <laughs> yes, yeah. indeed. Uh, and also, um, financial insight, we've noted that uh, the cane supply for the first six months of the current financial year has increased 18% uh, compared to the previous period due to an improvement in cane yields in, uh, for the estate and outgrowers. What would have been the biggest uh, drivers and reasons for this growth? Yes, so the, the biggest uh, drivers um, starts with good weather, okay. um, which is God-given. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we had good uh, cane growing conditions, mm -hmm. but uh, you can have good cane growing conditions and you still are not able to produce. Mm -hmm. But um, in this particular season that we are talking about, we were able to um, irrigate our crop mm -hmm. uh, because electricity was reliably available. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, that's part of the main reasons uh, okay. why we've been able to increase our uh, our yields. Mm -hmm. And I did say during the results presentation that people, when when you're talking about electricity, focus more on the cost of electricity. Mm -hmm. But what is even more important is to make sure that the electricity is available mm -hmm. and reliable. Mm -hmm. So when you need it, uh, it's available. Uh, and then you are able to irrigate your crop. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the main reasons why we've been able to, uh, to improve uh, our crop production. The other reason was that we had good rainfall, um, which was well distributed, and that also contributed to uh, the growing conditions that we, uh, that we had. Okay. But um, we, we obviously are able to benefit from all these opportunities mm -hmm. uh, through uh, operational excellence. Yeah. So we execute our operations to mm -hmm. make sure that we we take full advantage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, of mm -hmm. the of the good conditions when they are there. Yeah. And in this particular case, we were able to exploit those opportunities. Yes, I was very impressed by the uh, presentation you gave on the mission and the strategies that you're implementing to drive operational excellence and to get the results that you're getting. Do you maybe want to briefly touch on those? Uh, because I think they're very important for um, the public to hear about because I was very impressed by them. When you think Zambia sugar most of the time, you're thinking, okay, just uh, sugar production and all, but you don't really realize what's going on in the background that makes the company even more valuable than just what the front uh, is? 
Yes, so we have uh, six pillars in our strategy. Mm -hmm. um, the first pillar, obviously, is to be customer-centric mm -hmm. uh, and being a um, customer-led business. Mm -hmm. So we, we go into the market, we listen to what the market wants, we also, to some degree, anticipate what their requirements are, and we then invest accordingly. So that's the first mm -hmm. pillar that drives uh, how we do things. Mm -hmm. And um, some of the things that the market is telling us, for mm -hmm. example, is that uh, we need to invest in smaller packs uh, so that all categories of consumers mm -hmm. will be able to, w if you have five kwacha, for example, or ten exactly. kwacha, there will be uh, a product mm -hmm. uh, that is available for you. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we are investing, uh, investing in that. So that's the first um, uh, pillar of our strategy. The mm -hmm. second one uh, has to do with sustainable cane supply. Mm -hmm. Our business is founded on sugar cane. Mm -hmm. And if we can continue to produce uh, sugar cane sustainably, mm -hmm. and that's our intent and our commitment to do, uh, our business will continue to grow from strength to strength. Mm -hmm. And we have demonstrated that by being able to produce uh, for more than 50 years, mm -hmm. and we are continuing to, uh, to invest mm -hmm. in sustainable cane production. We've introduced a new farming system. We're investing in more efficient irrigation systems. Uh, and all those talk to enabling us to produce sustainably. Okay. The third pillar of our strategy has to do with operational excellence. This is where we make sure that uh, we are very good at whatever we do across the value chain. Mm -hmm. uh, the way we produce cane, uh, the way we run our factory operations, our logistics operations, and our sales and marketing operations. Mm -hmm. So operational excellence is, is an important pillar for, uh, for us. Um, and we continue to seek innovations, uh, best practices, uh, in order to be the best that we can be. Mm -hmm. uh, we then move on to the fact that we cannot always pass uh, costs uh, to the consumers, mm -hmm. so we aim to become sustainably low cost. Mm -hmm. um, and here again we look at exploiting economies of scale, mm -hmm. uh, using innovation and, and new technologies to continuously be pushing the envelope mm -hmm. uh, to, reduce, uh, to reduce our costs. Mm -hmm. There's also the element that in the export market, we are price takers, mm -hmm. and uh, you can only make money in the export market by uh, reducing your costs mm -hmm. and, and producing at the lowest cost possible. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we're also focusing on that. Uh, we spoke about illicit sugar trade earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, one pillar of our strategy is advocacy, advocacy mm -hmm. with the authorities, advocates through the Zambia Association of Manufacturers and um, advocacy uh, through uh, all the different stakeholders that are interested in our, in our industry mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that there is fair play uh, and, then, and that we are not competing unfairly with uh, illegal sugar imports mm -hmm. and counterfeit sugars. Uh, so that is a very important element of our, of our strategy. Uh, the other element has to do with diversification of revenue and the way we, we diversify our revenue is first to start with uh, a diversified product portfolio mm -hmm. uh, that um, cuts across the different uh, consumer segments. So we've got uh, products for the low, uh, low income segments and uh, products for the industrial market segments mm -hmm. and products for um, high income uh, consumers and being able to meet the different uh, requirements of the different market segments yeah. uh, diversifies our, our revenue. We're also looking to diversify revenue by going into new revenue streams, uh, such as ethanol, uh, either for fuel or portable uh, ethanol. These are mm -hmm. things that we're looking at mm -hmm. uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. And they are also related uh, to what we do because mm -hmm. you make ethanol from molasses, okay. which is a byproduct of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of the sugar making process. Okay. Uh, and then the other opportunity that we have to earn revenue in the future mm -hmm. is really to produce electricity for sale uh, to the national grid. We already do that uh, successfully okay. uh, at our Eswatini operation, mm -hmm. which is where I was before. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things that shareholders can be uh, have comfort yes. that we do have a game plan yeah. for how we will take the business uh, into the future mm -hmm. uh, as well as being able to, to compete. Yeah. Uh, finally, we, we have a pillar that addresses people capability because without people you can have the greatest plans yeah. but you need the best people to be Absolutely. able to do that. So Absolutely. we focus 
uh, systematically at uh, making sure that we have the talent that we need mm -hmm. and the people who have the relevant mm -hmm. uh, skills and knowledge that they need to be the best that can, they can be to achieve the operational excellence that yeah. we spoke about. Mm -hmm. So that, that's um, a yeah. kind of a, no, a summary of, yeah, of no, our, brilliant, the pillars brilliant. of our strategy. I love it. Yeah, yes. no, um, it's great. I mean, uh, speaking about the shareholder, I was sharing with um, with uh, Chembo that um, the very first stock that I ever got was Zambia Sugar stock and I was 10 years old. My dad got it for me for my birthday. Oh. Oh. So, you know, being here today is a bit of a surreal moment because it's like oh, watching the growth and I keep kicking myself that I should have kept buying some stock every birthday, sure. but it's never too late. Sure, it's never too late. <laughs> it's, it's never too late, especially with the growth to potential. Sure. Um, the best price to get it at is now, really. Yes, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so um, as Zambia continues to uh, pursue uh, debt restructuring, what is Zambia Sugar hopeful for from a macroeconomic uh, perspective over the next six months? What do you... Yeah, so we, um, we, we are very pleased with the government's efforts to tackle debt mm -hmm. uh, because uh, a reduction in national debt uh, usually translates into a stable macroeconomic environment, which is very important for our business. Um, I think for us, the, the most important uh, element is, is that uh, the Kwacha finds um, a, a sweet spot um, for, for us, it's in the range of uh, 17 to um, 18 mm -hmm. uh, kwacha per, per dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, we think that at, at that level will be a, a good level for all the different, all the different businesses. Mm -hmm. So our hope as Zambia Sugar is, is, is that the um, resolution of national debt mm -hmm. will bring about uh, a stable macroeconomic environment, okay. particularly with respect to the to the exchange rate. Okay, that's yes. that's great to hear. So, um, are you confident then that your team will match the one billion plus uh, profit after tax um, of the previous year? Yes, well, you you spoke to me earlier about my uh, my journey in, in, in Zambia Sugar. One of mm -hmm. the things that I'm proud of is the fact that we have now consolidated our position mm -hmm. as uh, a one billion plus quacha uh, mm -hmm. profit after tax business. Mm -hmm. And this is what um, is very important for, uh, for, for shareholders, that there is uh, consistency yes. uh, in, your, in your performance mm -hmm. and uh, the fact that they can consistently expect uh, that we'll achieve uh, a billion plus, mm -hmm. uh, I think is a, um, uh, is, is, is a good thing for, for our investors. Yeah. Uh, and we are very confident, mm -hmm. uh, particularly with the first half that we've had mm -hmm. and some of the prospects that we have for the remainder of the season. Mm -hmm. Our crop is looking good. Mm -hmm. The market demand is strong, both locally and in the domestic market. As I said earlier, mm -hmm. right now, uh, export sales are very lucrative. Mm -hmm. And uh, with more can, uh, we'll have the sugar to be able to meet uh, export market demand. And we are very confident that we will uh, once again, post uh, <laughs> one billion plus. One billion plus. Profit brilliant. After tax. That is brilliant. As a shareholder, that is something that I like to know. But sure. no conflict of interest. Sure. <laughs> Just putting it out yes, there. Yes, and no pressure. Yeah. On <laughs> Yes. Um, so thank you so much for um, the insightful um, interview that we've just had. And uh, again, congratulations on the amazing results uh, for your half year um, that we just uh, witnessed. Um, do you have any comments you would like the market to know about your company for the remainder of the year that you haven't already shared or something you would like to reiterate? Yeah, just in closing, mm -hmm. uh, I would just like to say that Zambia Sugar is a very exciting business, mm -hmm. uh, a business that's built on fundamentals, the mm -hmm. competitive advantage to be able to produce uh, sugar cane. Mm -hmm. We are one of the best uh, cane growing uh, countries in the world. Mm -hmm. So um, we have that competitive advantage to continue to uh, produce sugar into the future. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have um, very, a well established uh, domestic market. And the continued growth um, of industrialization mm -hmm. will mean that uh, there's uh, increasing demand uh, for, for industrial sugar. Uh, and we have a burgeoning uh, regional export market. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said uh, during the results presentation, mm -hmm. we are not even meeting demand yeah. uh, in, in that export market. So we are a business uh, that's built on fundamentals mm -hmm. and with significant opportunities in, mm -hmm. the, in the markets. Mm -hmm. 
and also our ability of our ability to produce. Mm -hmm. We've also formulated a very comprehensive uh, portfolio of uh, investments mm -hmm. to capitalize on the opportunities that we have. Mm -hmm. We are looking to invest uh, over 200 million US dollars uh, in the next uh, three to five years mm -hmm. in uh, route to consumer infrastructure such as warehousing and packing plants. Mm -hmm. We're also looking to optimize our factory operations mm -hmm. uh, as part of that investment uh, mm -hmm. program. We are looking to continue to invest behind our industrial customers mm -hmm. to make sure that we meet their refined uh, sugar demand. Mm -hmm. So all in all, a very exciting future yes, for, yeah. for, for the company mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, our shareholders and, and other stakeholders yeah. that are interested in what Zambia Sugar does. Yeah, no, that's a, a great outlook. Sure. Uh, here at Financial Insight, we wish you all the best and we look forward to celebrating uh, more success with you. So thank you very much for joining us today. To our viewers, thank you very much for tuning into the Financial Insight Zambia show. Catch all our interviews on all the Financial Insight platforms. Uh, Oswald, thank you so much uh, for joining us and congratulations once again on a stellar uh, performance for the first half of the year. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Chani. Chani. <laughs> How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? You like white spoon sugar? Oh, yes, I do. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much. Steer it up. Steer it to happiness. Steer it to sweetness. And add some sugar to my world. Steer it up. There's no sugar. Steer it up.